In July, U.S. officials estimated that Iran had repatriated, quote, less than 20 billion from previously frozen overseas assets of 100 to 125 billion dollars. Were those funds also repatriated in cash and gold? Was this an addition to the 11.9 billion dollars? That could amount to a grand total of 33.6 billion dollars. Did any of this money go through the formal financial system? If so, the administration is not being truthful about the 1.7 billion. If many billions of dollars arrived in Iran on pallets, this would be a pretty astounding revelation. All right, the numbers keep getting bigger. First it was 400 million, now 1.7 billion, now 33 billion. My next guest is test has testified before Congress yesterday about the money that Iran is getting. He's Foundation for Defense of Democracies. He's the executive director there. Mark Dubovitz joins me now. Uh, $33.6 billion in cash and gold. That's a lot. That's quite a difference, Mark. Liz, it's a big difference. And the problem is the administration is just not coming clean on exactly how much money was sent to Iran in cash and potentially gold. And so we're just trying to piece together from what they have admitted in trying to establish a number. And we've looked at the fact that they've admitted $11.9 billion was provided to Iran as part of the interim agreement. They claim that the Iranians have repatriated $20 billion. The Iranians are claiming that they've gotten $30 billion. And there's the $1.7 billion that we know about that was delivered in cash. So I'm saying worst case scenario here, the administration has green-lighted the transfer of about $33.6 billion. I don't think it'll be that high. But uh, we're certainly talking many billions, not just 1.7. You know, Mark, you're really respected and uh, you're held in high regard down on Capitol Hill. And the Associated Press, you're right, said back in July, Iran got up to $20 billion. It seemed like this was happening all along, even though the sanctions were in place. Didn't this violate sanctions if the administration is giving uh, Iran money? I mean, isn't that against the law? Well, it doesn't violate sanctions that the administration is greenlighting uh, the transfer of money to Iran, but what it does violate is uh, decades of U.S. practice to transfer this money in cash. So we've gone out to the financial sector globally and we've said, look, you've got to comply with laws against money laundering, against terror financing, and we're going to impose billions of dollars worth of fines if you don't. Well, we're trying to get the formal financial system to use formal channels. And then we turn around and green light the transfer of cash to Iran. And we all know cash is used by drug cartels and terrorists and, uh, and arms right. dealers. And it's just, it's sending the wrong message. And Mark, you know, we already had the press secretary, Josh Ernest, say that, you know, the 400 million is certainly possible that it did go to nefarious activities, including terrorism uh, in Iran, uh, basically nefarious activities conducted by Iran, including terrorist activity. Uh, certainly Hezbollah. We also have a State Department official. He was pressed by reporters on the Iran payout specifics. Let's listen. We asked about the specifics of the payments in January and we're told that there was never ever going to, no one would ever tell us. Well, again, I mean, we, that we, what you got was our standard answer, which is true, that we protect the confidentiality of these yes, arrangements. I'm just asking you, if, if, well, from look, the communications Matt, piece so of Matt, this alone, mm -hmm. if you had it all to do over again, you'd do it exactly the same way? Um, or was there a, a mistake made in this overabundance of caution and this dribbling out of details? Uh, I wouldn't call it a mistake. Would you call it a mistake, Mark? Look, the administration is in a very strange position, and they're trying to have it both ways. On one hand, they're saying, look, there was a financial embargo on Iran, so the only choice that we had was to send the money in cash. Well, if that's true, and they had, the only choice was to send the money in cash, then did they send the 30-plus billion dollars in cash? Alternatively, if there are other ways to send the money, and that they actually sent all of that other sanctions relief through the formal financial system and not in cash, then why did they send the 1.7 billion in cash, right? The administration can't have it both ways. Either they basically ceded to Iranian demands, gave cash in a unique payment in order to get value in return, in this case, I believe, hostages, in which case it was a ransom, or the administration has been engaged in the, probably the biggest airlift of cash in U.S. history to a state sponsor of terrorism. Mark Dubovitz, he's with the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, testifying for Congress with more detail about the growing amounts given to Iran. Thank you, Mark, for your time. Appreciate it.